Elite is a very complicated game and its graphics settings are no exception. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can get the most out of your graphics card in terms of balancing performance and eye candy. So the first thing you want to do is something that you actually want to do outside of the game. And we'll talk in a moment as to why this is meaningful. You want to go to your NVIDIA control panel. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with AMD graphics cards, so I can't help you with those. But for NVIDIA cards, you want to enable DSR, which stands for Dynamic Super Resolution, with the new deep learning algorithm. While this is meaningful, I'll explain in a moment. But if your card supports it, make sure you enable this before you launch the game. Having done that, we can get into the actual graphics settings of the game. And we'll start with display settings. The adapter is set. The monitor is just what monitor you play on in case you have more than one display. These are pretty self explicatory The resolution should be the native resolution of your display pretty much always. There is one exception, which is if your card supports dynamic super resolution or DSR, as I just explained, you will see an additional resolution, which is the DSR resolution, which is above the native resolution of your display. And this is a this is a good and interesting thing, and I'll get back to this resolution in a moment. But let's assume for a moment that DSR is not a thing and that we are operating at native resolution of a display. We'll go through the rest of the settings. The full screen setting will generally be either full screen or borderless. Full screen might have a slight performance gain, but it's very noticeable. Most players should play in borderless as it makes switching between screens and looking at that important Inara page <laughs> that tells you where you're supposed to go. Um, all that more seamless, but you can run full screen if you want at your native resolution. The um, are a few situations where you need to run full screen and specifically if you use DSR, which is the setting I was talking about earlier, you have to run full screen. Uh, DSR does not work in just borderless mode. So these are two settings that do go together. If you use a DSR super resolution, then you need to run full screen. Otherwise, generally speaking, just run the game borderless. It'll be just fine. Vertical sync is the subject of an enormous amount of debate. Uh, I generally run with vertical sync on, but it's a, it's a trade off. Like the issue with vertical sync is that it introduces stutter if you cannot keep up with the synchronization rate of your display, which in my case is 144 hertz. If my frame rate would uh, drop below 144, what the game would do with vertical sync on is it would start uh, alternating between 72 and 144 frame rates, as that's all it can do is it can divide the frame rate by half, and the perceived impact of that is stutter. And that is why for most gamers, unless you really know what you're doing, it is best to play with vertical sync disabled. This can introduce tearing, as in when frames are rendered mid screen, but it's generally a lot less noticeable than the stutter and performance lag introduced by enabling the uh, vertical sync. So I would say turn it off unless you know what you're doing. And if you know what you're doing and want to turn it on, by all means, turn it back on. Refresh rate should, again, almost always be the native refresh rate of your display, which in my case is 144 hertz. Frame limit doesn't matter all that much in most cases. Almost everybody should have the frame limit off. By the way, if you introduce vertical sync or enable it, it locks the frame rate maximum to that of your display. So it already introduces a frame limit. If you have V-Sync on, you definitely don't have a need for a frame rate limit. But if you turn vertical sync off, there may be situations where you want to limit the frame rate to some amount, like for example, that of your display. That's just to make sure that sort of like in, in menus, like this one, for example, the frame rate doesn't go above the the maximum of the display because like if you if you don't basically and enable sort of like turn off see how like even in menu the frame rate just skyrockets up and this results in my video card being used also in situations where I kind of really don't need the video card to be used uh, at that level and that just burns power and creates heat and it's just unnecessary so again if you have vsync off you may want to turn the frame li limit to the frame limit of your display and lock it so that it doesn't it doesn't go high when it's kind of not necessary. 
however, if you play with vertical sync off uh, and you're not too worried about this, you can just keep this off. It's like not a big deal. Just make sure you don't set a frame rate limit that is below the refresh rate of your monitor because that would create all kinds of issues. So don't do that. But for the time being, we're going to run with vertical sync off, the refresh rate of 144 and the frame limit at the refresh rate of my display. Shadow preparation of startup, this doesn't matter that much. This is something that is done once when you update your drivers or the game updates and stuff like that. You can safely this, leave this off. Now, to the part that matters the most, quality. Quality has a number of pre sort of set settings. And the funny thing is that these actually are not that great. So we'll get to that in a moment. You can select ultra high, mid or low, plus there's VR settings that are somewhat designed for like um, lower latency, but I'm not going to get into. But I would assume that most people will be playing on some range between mid and ultra like graphic settings. And what these settings do is they change a number of things that we're going to get into in a moment. Uh, but generally speaking, let's start with Ultra, which I think is going to be a popular starting place for a lot of people. So model draw distance, that's like how far things appear. Um, you can play with this, but like, I think leaving it at the maximum for Ultra settings is fine. Texture quality, same. And isotropic filtering is something to do with like how textures are filtered. The overall performance weight of anisotropic filtering in modern GPUs is very low. So honestly, I think there's no reason not to leave it at 16 samples for pretty much every graphic setting you could think about. Shadow quality actually has quite an impact, and this is something that you may want to play with if you have need to additional frame per second. Same with regards to spot shadow quality. Bloom is like more of a personal preference. It doesn't have a huge performance impact, but it also kind of like looks it has a very distinctive look, so some people may want to either turn it off entirely or tone it down if they find it annoying. Blur, same considerations as Bloom, not a big performance impact, and more of a personal preference. Now, the important ones, anti-aliasing and this super something and upscaling combo because these two settings go together. What are these and what do these do? For one, I think they are named in a very, very confusing fashion because, in fact, both are um anti-aliasing techniques except the first one is what is called anti-aliasing proper what is what is um, generally referred to as post-processing anti-aliasing this is anti-aliasing that is done on the final frame after it is produced essentially it is not done within the actual 3d engine it is something that is applied to the final image and effectively kind of blurs the image in a smart way to reduce the jaggies that are typical of aliasing. So SMAA is by far the most sophisticated algorithm. FXAA can be used if you have some insane performance concerns, but for 99.999% of people using anti-aliasing in post-processing, and we'll get into when you want to do that in a minute, you will want to be using SMAA. This is a default setting, and the, the two real settings for anti-aliasing here are really SAMA, or off, and we'll talk in a moment when to use each. The next one is super sampling, and this is super sampling anti-aliasing, and what this does is it basically renders the scene internally at a higher resolution of what the game runs, uh, and then kind of like just brings it down to a resolution of your display. This is incredibly performance intensive because setting super sampling at X2 actually makes your video card render the scene at four times the number of pixels, because it's like 2x in each dimension, so it's actually four times the number of pixels that it needs to render than if you had, had it set at 1.0. It looks great, but the performance impact of super sampling 2.0 is extreme. It will tank your frame rate in ways that few other things in the game do. So generally speaking, well, you want to start is super sampling 1.0. In addition, for reasons I just cannot fathom, <coughs> Elite uses AMD FSR 1.0 as the upscaling mechanism. And in my personal opinion, this just looks terrible. So one of the things you definitely want to do is switch the upscaling algorithm to just be normal. Like get rid of both FidelityFX Cast and FSR 1.0, which are super legacy 
stuff that you just you just don't want to use. So set it to normal and start with Wando O and SMAA as the default setting. This should be the default setting for most people. Normal upscaling, Wando O super sampling, and SMAA as post processing anti aliasing. This will give you a baseline level of visual quality for the game. If your video card supports it and your frame rates like allow you to kind of like push higher, you can try and push super sampling higher, for example, at 1.5 or 2.0. Um, but you will notice a performance impact and with with a performance impact in frames in Elite Dangerous, a lot of weird things happen. For me, in my experience, ships become less responsive with lower frame rates. And by the way, there are certain effects in game that actually depend on frame rate. For example, the auto loader experimental on uh, multi cannons and similar weapons actually goes by frames. So the more frames you're pushing, the faster your weapons reload. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but it works actually that way. I made a video about this some time ago. So anyway, back to back to the point we're making. Start with super sampling one to O and set anti-aliasing to SMMA, and this is gonna be the baseline setting. But and the other settings I think are generally fine. You can play with them, but the defaults but are set by the quality setting, ultra high, uh, medium and low are fine. So play with them if you want, but generally speaking, these aren't gonna be, I think, the make or break of the overall graphics quality experience. Um, if you haven't, you may want to adjust your gamma settings so that it actually looks as dark as it's supposed to look, which in my case is actually not very dark. I can actually push it high because I got some big lights in front of me, but I will think I'll keep it that way for now for the time being as the lights will then go off. Um, now for some tips and some tricks. What if you wanted to kind of actually push it higher than 1.0? Well, if you're using super sampling, which is, it's, it's a much higher quality type of anti-aliasing, my personal advice is if you push it to 2.0, disable post-processing uh, anti-aliasing. So if you're running 2.0, if I am running 2.0, I will generally turn anti-aliasing post-processing off. Because the blurring effect that SMAA does on top of the already anti-aliased image that comes from down sampling a 2.0 um, render to, to your screen, in, in my opinion, does very little to improve the visual quality. In fact, it introduces blur that decreases the image quality. So if you're gonna be running super sampling 2.0, turn post-processing anti-aliasing off is my opinion. But what is an even better option than doing all of these things? The even better option of all of these things is using the dynamic super resolution of the NVIDIA graphics card. So enabling this sort of like above your monitor display resolution running full screen because you have to if you set it that way and leaving super sampling at 1.0 and anti-aliasing at off. This is what is going to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of performance from your video card as far as frames per second are concerned and visual quality as in quality of anti-aliasing because the dynamic super resolution algorithm of the modern NVIDIA cards is far, far, far better than what is implemented in the Cobra engine of Elite Dangerous. So if you can and if your card supports it, this is the way to go. Full screen resolution set to a DSR resolution, full screen mode set to full screen, otherwise DSR doesn't work, and then super sampling set to one and anti-aliasing set to off. Once more, if your video card supports this, that is the way to go. If for whatever reason it does not, the next best thing, if you have a very high-end card to do, would be to go with 2.0 super sampling anti-aliasing off, if you can't, if you have a lower end video card, then you will want to use instead 1.0 super sampling anti-aliasing set to SMAA. In all of these cases, in every case, upscaling should be set to normal and this AMD technology should be disabled. I'm not anti-AMD, like some modern stuff AMD is amazing. I actually run an AMD CPU and I love it. It's just these two AMD techs are 
kind of functionally obsolete in my opinion so let's say we've now done all of this and we set super sampling and smaa to a default setting we're running in our full screen view what are some tricks to kind of like also like play with graphic quality in the game and the like so now we are in uh, Taigeta, which is one of my most visually sort of stunning systems that I kind of love taking screenshots at with our chieftain with the titan bits this titan we're actually at, like nearby titan's daughter somewhere but I couldn't find it so let's go back here there's titan daughter one of the few Coralie stations in the midst of an asteroid belt so here one of the things that not a lot of people surprisingly know but it's a cool pretty feature of a game is that there's a standard way to take screenshots which is to press f10 in the game if i press f10 i just did so now i'm gonna take a sort of regular resolution screenshots but if you want to take really 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 beautiful screenshots there's an even better way to do that and the even better way to take the stunning screenshots which i use for my um, uh, thumbnails of my videos for example and for other sort of like content creation work is to press ALT and F10. ALT and F10 is dumping a high resolution screenshot, which as you can see is taking some time and is gonna produce a bitmap of like six or 700 megabit, megabytes on my hard drive, which then you can use in your favorite, um, um, in your favorite editor, visual editor to like downsample it or do whatever you want with it it's like an incredibly high quality image that can be edited in a, a very very uh fancy manner do note that alt f10 so this high resolution uh screenshot introduces massive lag for anyone else in the instance that is why frontier has disabled it in open play it only works in solo mode and in private groups it does work in private groups, but please do not use it in private groups without prior warning and consent of people who you are playing with because it's going to lag the heck out of the, init of the instance out for everybody else. And it's just a very poor form thing to do. So that's what I got for you today as far as like elite visual settings are concerned. I hope you find this helpful to make your game look even more beautiful while sustaining some decent frame rates. Glory to mankind. Commander Mechan, over and out.